Hey guys, welcome to Smack Talk Wrestling Reviews. I am your host, Boise, and we have a massive episode of SmackDown Live to cover. We have the historical uh, TLC women's contract signing. We have Daniel Bryan venting his frustration and anger towards the WWE Universe. And we have some massive matches as well. So if you're going to ask which show won this week, straight away I'm going to tell you now, SmackDown was the better show. But if you want to see what else happened on SmackDown, let's hit the music. So we kicked off with the historical TLC triple threat contract signing between Becky Lynch, Charlotte Flair and Asuka. Paige, the general manager of SmackDown Live, was leading this contract signing. And to be honest, it was one of the best contract signings I've seen in some time. Reason is, Becky's promo was bloody brilliant. She pretty much gave everyone in that ring. She told Charlotte she's only there because she was handed yet an opportunity. Asuka, you only won, you won your opportunity to be here, so but I'm still going to beat you. I mean, Charlotte interrupted saying Becky's playing the same record yet again and she's going to win the title. She beat Asuka at WrestleMania to destroy the streak and she's going to shatter the rest of Asuka's, you know, attitude as well. Asuka pretty much said Charlotte was lucky and Becky's never beaten her. I thought this was a really great promo between all three women. Paige was able to control all three and make sure that chaos didn't erupt, aka someone going for a table, which is nice to see. I like to see. But contract signing can actually end with promos. Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville interrupted this after Becky signed the contract and stormed off. Uh, after cutting a really good promo, that's I've got to give Becky, who's just so good, and the fans just ate up everything she said. Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville cut a really decent promo as well at the back end, which led to Paige making a tag team match between Charlotte Flair and Asuka taking on Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, aka Becky's still slightly injured, so we're going to keep her out of this, but it allows the other two women to interact at least. So I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10. Really good start to the show. This led us on to the tag team match which I just spoke of. Where we did see Charlotte and Asuka taking on Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. And I'm going to pat WWE Creative for doing a good job with Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. They have been built up quite well in the last few weeks. Since the build up to Survivor Series, I've actually thought that Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville have been really good. I think the heel tactics have been brilliant. I think Mandy's delivery on promos have been good. And I think Sonya Deville's dominance in the ring has been brilliant. And the match itself was decent as well. You're going up against two women who are seen as one of, you know, two thirds of the best women on the SmackDown roster and you were holding your own, which is good to see. It's building up new stars for the future, which SmackDown seems to be doing quite well on the women's division. Take notes, Raw. That's all I've got to say about that one. But the match itself was a decent match. Asuka and Charlotte started really started to get at each other near the end. Charlotte accidentally used the big boot on Asuka when she, when she thought it was Mandy Rose. I mean, Asuka kicked Charlotte in the face when she was about to win the match, allowing Sonya Deville to pin Charlotte Flair. Yes, it made Asuka look a little bit stupid, but it made sense the heat of the moment, both women having really strong promos before, before, before the match. I mean, obviously, the boot to the face, I wouldn't blame Asuka at all. Becky Lynch was watching on on the side. She didn't get to say anything, which is a bit of a shame. But all three women were staring at each other at the end of the match. And it also gave Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville a huge victory. So I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10. A really good start to the show so far. Next up, we had a really, really good triple threat match where we saw Xavier Woods. Cesaro and Jey Uso taking each other on. This is obviously a build up to the triple threat match where we'll see the New Day, the Bar and the Usos taking each other for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. This was bloody brilliant. There were so many near count, uh, near pinfalls. It was fantastic. You saw Jimmy 
You saw Jey Uso and Xavier Woods showing respect after they were both able to counter each other's techniques, which was great. Cesaro being really smart and watching on from the side of the ring and using tactics with his partner Sheamus. All fun indeed. One of my best my, one of my best segment parts of the whole match was when Cesaro just knocked all the pancakes off the New Day's commentating table and it just got the crowd riled up. Really good heel heat right there. I like when Cesaro does stuff like that. It's like when he got the beach ball and just popped it. That was great. Um, but the match was brilliant. It looked like Cesaro was going to get the victory over uh, with Xavier was in the sharpshooter, but Jimmy uh, Jay Uso, I keep calling him Jimmy Jay Uso, super kicked him. It looked like Xavier was going to get the quick pin for. It didn't. Jay they encounter him again to get another super kick. One, two, three. The Usos win. That puts the momentum into the Usos corner but my god this was a fantastic triple threat match i always find triple threat mats could be really really uneven but this was absolutely fun it sometimes was like a two-on-one handicap match for cesaro sometimes both jay and xavier was were about to try and take each other out which was great it was so much fun from start to finish i'm going to give this an eight out of ten and it just makes the build up for the triple threat match at TLC for the tag team titles even more exciting. Next up we had Daniel Bryan on Miz TV. This was brilliant. This was a really strong heel promo from Daniel Bryan. I loved it because pretty much Daniel Bryan went out and he, he used his own beliefs. The beliefs of his veganism, his belief on the environment and everything like that. And Usually, you go, oh, that guy's, you know, it makes sense. Fans did agree with Daniel when he said this as a baby fits, but because he's a heel and the way he talks about it, being arrogant and so condescending towards the fans, it automatically got the fans so angry. And the way he got back at the fans, where he talked about them when they were going, what every time he's talked about the environment or anything like that, he just goes, these guys are sheep. They're sheep. And they've been chanting the same thing for 20 years and they're so stupid they don't... Really, and I thought, oh my god, Daniel Bryan is a genius heel right now. This is exactly what you want to see from him, a heel like this. And I absolutely enjoyed it. It was fun. It was great to see. And it just got more and more heat towards him. Uh, the Miz obviously was there. He was asking the questions. And he even asked the question, is it thanks to me, your champion, because you finally listened to me? And Daniel used that as well. He said yes, then no, then yes, then no. And then when it doesn't matter. This caused AJ Styles to come out. He tried to take on, he tried to beat the crap out of Daniel Bryan. Daniel tried to run away. The Miz got involved. The Miz used the skull crushing finale. And this led up to the main event where we will see AJ Styles versus The Miz. But I thought this was really, really good. This is really showing a, uh, Daniel Bryan at his best heel promo. So I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10 because it was so much fun to watch. Next up we had Jeff Hardy versus Randy Orton. Now I know what you're thinking, well we've seen this match before, we've seen it a few times now, but because we've had a bit of a high hairiness from this, you know, from these two, it actually felt a lot fresher. You know, because I know on Raw we complain that we've seen, you know, Dolph Ziggler versus Seth Rollins a lot of times but because we haven't seen this match for a few few weeks and obviously now Randy's looking at Rey Mysterio and Jeff Hardy's going after Samoa Joe it kind of was a nice refreshing little match and it was both men showed they have, still have great chemistry against each other they were both able to counter each other's moves and Jeff Hardy was more aggressive it shows that Jeff still hasn't forgiven Randy well how can you forgive her? And, but wanted revenge on Randy for what he did to him at Hell in the Cell. And that's what we got. It was kind of like a really good rubber match to have. Yes, it looked like Jeff was about to get the victory. But Samoa Joe comes onto the big screen. Cuts, tells Jeff he's doing a great job. RKO out of nowhere. Randy Orton gets the win. The heels obviously using that tactic quite often on SmackDown. But this time it was more effective. Jeff's in the corner after being defeated. Samoa Joe's still on the big screen and he cuts a, you know, a message. A pretty much a 
what, 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 pretty much a message about drinking and being responsible. And it was great. I loved this bit where he goes, Hi, I'm superstar, WWE superstar Samoa Joe. And I want to talk to you about drinking. I was like, oh my god, this is brilliant. And he cuts it, and it's not any heelish or anything like that, but you know it's all focused on Jeff Hardy's history with drinking and substance abuse and stuff like that. And I was just like, this is brilliant. This is really smart. From it creative giving Samoa Joe this much freedom is brilliant. I'm going to give this, with the ending of that match, a 7 out of 10. Brilliant. Last but not least, it was our main event. It was The Miz versus AJ Styles. Uh, on commentary, we also had the new Daniel Bryan. And I was a bit worried that, because at some points during the match, there were a lot more focusing on Daniel Bryan on commentary than the match itself. But what Daniel was saying and how he was talking, especially with you know Byron Saxon saying, I wish my daughter would kick you in the nuts, was quite entertaining. It was fun. Daniel Bryan's heel cockiness, veganism, the way he's talking now, using his, you know, his own personal beliefs, but using his heel tactics to make it feel, feel arrogant and, you know, this is what he wants. And this is brilliant. This is well, well, well put together here. Uh, it added an extra layer to the match because the Miz and the AJ Styles have good chemistry already. And it just showed in this match. The Miz got some really good movements into the match where it looked like he got the victory with another skull crushing finale. AJ gets out of that, thank God. And then AJ gets a calf crusher onto the Miz. The Miz taps out. AJ wins, but Daniel Bryan attacks AJ from behind. This is pretty much another savage attack on AJ Styles, where Daniel is just legitimately just beating the living crap out of him. Even when the referees separate him, and you, you see the WWE logo at the end, where you know the show's ending, Daniel Bryan goes back and puts more pressure onto AJ. It's like the leg, which the Miz works on, the, and the one which Daniel focused on, on his vicious attack. You see just AJ Styles panning out, the show's ending, and you just see AJ say, get him off me, get him off me, in absolute agony. This was a great match. It was a great match. Daniel on Mike was brilliant. And then the after match, a beat down by Daniel Bryan was brilliant. I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. A very entertaining main event from Smackdown Live. And there you go, guys. That was Smackdown for this week. What did I think? I think it was really good. It's building up on a lot of really smart things. Uh, we also got a dance break before Miz TV, which I forgot to mention. We also had Daniel Bryan throwing the yes um, things away all the time. It's now no more yes movement. Extremely. And the veganism kind of stuff which he used in his promo was brilliant. The historic contract signing, great. And we also got announced that we're going to see Charlotte versus Asuka, a rematch from WrestleMania this year. Next week, I cannot wait to see it. We're also getting a rap battle. We're getting a rap battle, hosted by The New Day. The Usos versus The Bar in a rap battle. Not gonna lie, I think, I know it's gonna be silly, but I think I'm gonna enjoy it. But, what was the final score? Easy, an eight out of 10. Really good fun. I actually enjoyed this week's Smackdown Live. I wasn't groaning through it like I was through Raw, and everything's moving on the rivalries perfectly. There's, there's a lot on there, which is great to see. But what was your favourite part, guys? Leave it in the comments below. And if you do like our videos, remember to like, subscribe, and press the bell to keep notified. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do. It's at Smack Talk. It's at Smack Talk YouTube. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, sorry, it's at Boise88. And I'll see you guys next time on Smack Talk Wrestling Reviews.